So we are Kristen and Kevin Brewer. I have passionate foodies. Um, just to express how much we love cooking and and uh, making and creating food would take us probably the whole hour that we have today. Um, so to shorten it up, I'll say we are super passionate about it. I'm a graphic designer and I work in the marketing department for Chelsea Broughton Bank. So I'm lucky to have not only the coolest job there, but I also get to do really fun things like cooking for you guys and showing you how to make some things. And this is my husband, Kevin. Yeah, um, I'm an arborist and as Kristen said, also an avid cooker. Um, I gotta say, it's probably one of our, uh, you know, best times of the day is, you know, once work's over, you get to unwind in the kitchen, make a beautiful meal. And, you know, this time of year also get the plants growing, the veggie garden's almost starting. It's yeah. just a great time to make tacos, all the fresh ingredients. Yeah. So we are going to make tacos today and we're going to make tacos two ways. Um, we're going to make a tofu version, um, which is my favorite. And a flank steak version, which is actually Kevin's favorite, which is how we ended up coming to the conclusion that we needed tacos two ways in this house. Um, so we've perfected how to cook them at the same time so that all the ingredients that you need are ready to rock at the same time. Um, we're also going to show you how to make your own corn tortillas. You don't have to rely on store-bought ones. Um, you can easily make them yourself. And it's surprisingly easy once you get the hang of it. Maybe the first time you make them, um, you may have a hiccup or two and have to tweak, but it's really easy to make your own corn tortillas. The reason I love doing it, a lot less waste. So when it's just the two of us, we can just quickly make the six tacos that we need to make, and there's just no waste. Um, we're also going to make a guacamole from scratch. Um, you don't have to rely on those packets of uh, flavors and seasoning that you don't really know what's in it. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to make that from scratch, and then we're going to show you some neat little tricks along the way that we use to either save time, bring out flavors or complement. Um, and so with that, I think Kevin's just gonna take the uh, show and show you how to make corn tortillas, right? All right. Do it. So luckily our avocado was ripe today. Today is the day matched up with, the, <laughs> uh, with taco day. We, we bought three different ripenesses to make sure one was gonna be good. We did, we really uh, did. But as far as making your own taco shells, um, I like to use Bob's Red Mill um, Masa Harina. Um, it's kind of a pre-mix of everything you need in the tortilla. It's got the corn. Um, it's already you know processed properly. But it makes it really simple. We've tried a few different brands, and just everything Bob seems to be good. Um, you know, fair price. And, and, and like Kristen we're not, was saying. We're not getting endorsed by Bob's, though. But if you are watching, call us. Sponsor Bob. Sponsor. <laughs> um, but yeah, also, like Kristen was saying, you know, less waste. You know, this bag can be in the in the uh, cupboard for a year. Um, Not that it lasts that long. You can make long. shells whenever you want, yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't always seen it at the stores, but you can buy it online also. Um, we just buy them like three bags at a time. So- You were forgetting your first step. Always get your pan preheated first. You need that thing nice and cooking hot. Um, so we start that usually about five or 10 minutes before we make the, uh, the uh, shells themselves. Sometimes even more because we forget to do it. So we do it as soon as we think of it. So key piece of equipment for it is you need a taco press. So this one is a cast iron. It's very easy. You don't really, you just have to wipe it down when you're done. You know, very, very low mess of cleanup. Let me just quickly show against, cause you have your black shirt on. So it's a little harder yeah. to see. Right, so it's a really, you know, streamlined contraption that sort of folds over onto itself. It's heavy as heck. Yeah, so I can put that sideways in so you can see it better. There you go. Um, yep, so you put the top down, then you press it. Traditionally, they're made out of wood, but this one pretty much will last probably five generations or longer. So, yeah, you know, through the apocalypse one. at least. As far as mixing up the, you know, the, uh, the batter, I suppose, um, it's, a, it's a little bit less water than it is cornmeal, um, but it's a little easier to add a little more cornmeal if you need to thicken it up a little bit. So I've got about a half a cup of the mix here and about a half a cup of water. And then I just like to throw a little bit of salt in there because it's not a salted pre-mix. Yeah, this salt's optional. A lot of people don't do that. We do it because we feel it brings out the flavor of it a little bit, but that part is completely optional for you. Yeah, and then you just uh, get the mix. This is a little bit, a little bit wet still, so I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. Um, I find it easier to add 
more of the corn than the water. So I usually start off with it a little soupy. Can you describe what consistency you're looking for though, so that they can try to get an idea of what consistency they're aiming? Yeah, so you want it to be a pretty, uh, almost like a, just a little bit dry Play-Doh consistency. You want it a little sticky, but you want it to, um, you know, right about like, you want it to be pretty stiff, um, a little grainy, but just a little bit sticky, pretty dry though. So once you've got that mixed up. Does that feel good? It feels good to me. Awesome. Let me take this bag out of your way. Thank you. Yeah. So for the press, you want to use um, parchment paper. Um, you wouldn't want to press it right in there and get stuck. And you can actually buy pre-cut parchment papers that are meant for the press. Um, they're the perfect size to get started. You know, they fit great in there. We've done it all. Yeah. We've learned a lot of lessons. Consider this a pro tip because we have done it all and we've we've definitely made mistakes. <laughs> yeah, trying to use the roll of parchment and then you cut it and it just tries to roll back up. Just it rolls out of your house. Yeah, you can buy these by the hundreds. Um, and cheaply and cost effectively. Also, I love it because there's no not a lot of waste, which is... So then half a cup makes about six six inch tortillas um, and you want to go for about a golf ball size ball of it um, put it just off center towards the uh, flat part because it's going to try to squish it away from itself sandwich it. sandwich it with a piece on the top and you just give it light pressure not a ton then you want to spin it and that just helps level it out so it's not thinner on one side thicker on the other again just a light press um, and you can see you got a nice six inch, six inch tortilla. The uh, parchment paper will peel right off, so you can take a look at it there. Um, we're going to leave it sandwiched in there and just make the um, the other five. So you just keep repeating that process. You have golf ball size, and uh, you know if you do press too hard, the tortilla just comes out pretty thin, and then it's tough to get the uh, parchment off. So it does take a little bit of practice. Um, but it, it really, you'll get there in no time. It, yeah, and it's easy to do if you do it small like we do. Just just do six or so at a time. Yeah. Just a light press, a little spin. He's got this down. If you need taco shells, just ask Kevin. And then after the first one, I just, uh, you know, use the top of that one, flip them right over and just kind of stack them. So it's just a one sheet of paper between each uh, shell. Just so they don't stick. They do get a little sticky. Some people will use like wet paper towels or um, sometimes like different things, you know, like wax, like a waxed paper, not quite a parchment paper. We've tried all of those different things and we, we struggled to get it to separate um, and found that these circles uh, really were just the yeah. easiest. They just really got it done. So we never, we stopped searching after that because why struggle when you, when you don't have to? Yep. So we've got three, so we want to try to make three more out of this. Again, golf ball size. If you end up with five or a little taco, the little one's my half, favorite. You know, sometimes you get a little sample taco. The little shell is my favorite because we end up getting a little sample. It's really good to test the guac that we're about to make with it. Nice. So far, so good. You can see you can. I mean, you, you crank them right out. It really doesn't take long, as you can see. To, to just make them fresh. It's always worth And I don't, you don't need to be, he's done this a thousand times, which is why he's so confident in flipping it over and doing that. Um, you don't, you don't need, you'll find your own groove with how you want to um, flip them. I do this less often than he does. And it's, it's just really, um, it's interesting to watch me do it because like I'll get little tears or, or, I'm, or I, I hesitate. Um, and so in our house, we just, um, we deferred the tortilla guy and I'm the guac gal, so. And you did it perfectly again. Yep. How do you do that every time? Six. Golf ball size. I, I would be able to I made a few tacos in my day. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You get it's not a lot of pressure. Um, so now I've got these. We can, uh, yeah, let me get this guy out of your way because he's a heavy, heavy dude. Keep the fingers off here, a little wipe down in my cooking area. You gotta keep that clean. I'll get that. 
All right, so then as far as cooking them, um, you got your preheated pan. You want to flip them twice. Um, the first go, you give them about 10 seconds on one side, then flip them, then give them 45 seconds each side again after that. You're trying to get a little bit of a skin on the first side. So after the flip, it'll kind of steam the inside rather than dry out too much. Can you do this on your timer? Yep, and I'll set, I'll set my timer on this. So you just got to kind of gently get your papers out of there. Throw them right down on that preheated pan. And as soon as you see, they'll start. And, and you don't want to use any oil. It's a dry pan. It's a dry pan. So kind of while you're giving it that first 10 seconds just to seal a little bit, I can set my timer for 45 seconds, which I probably could have done earlier. <laughs> going to start that. Um, and you just give them a flip. They're already, uh, they're going to, they're going to toughen up pretty fast. You know, it looks like it's a sticky dough that wants to fall apart, but they really are pretty sturdy. Uh, and so you want to show, explain what you're looking for. What you're looking for is on that first one. Now you've got that little skin there. You can see they slide around real easy. Um, but now you've got the other side sealed. When you flip it, it should almost puff up a little bit. Yeah, they um, like move. They like dance on the... Yeah, and then you'll start to get that, you know, on the second flip, you'll see kind of that browning from the, uh, you know, that traditional look. But it's very simple and, uh, you know, it's... It's worth it, I feel. It's always worth it, you know? yeah. And it's really because you're not using any oils. You just wipe the pan with a rag. You wipe the press with a rag. It's not even any dishes. So we'll just repeat that for another... 45. You're good. You already have it down. So sometimes you, they, and, and you'll, you'll see it when you see it in person, it's harder to, we can't flip up the griddle to show you exactly what we're looking at, but you, you see them almost look like they're like breathing a little bit. Like they un undulate really, like really slightly. Like they look like they're moving. Um, and some of them will actually get a, a little bubble puff to them. That's actually what you're always going for. We make our tortillas, like I said, every single time. And we probably nail the, 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 the bubble movement um, like three quarters of the time. Yeah. Here's your um, and usually, you know, if you're making these ahead of time, you can just put them on tin foil, put them in a little packet. Keep them warm. Keep them warm, but you can see you've got your little, you know, your kind of little brown circles there that you usually would get on a tortilla. Which is what I think, I think you'd be looking for. Yeah. Nice. And then you just right back at it with the next two. So this is the point where they start ripping and then we'll, I'll try to convince them that I'm making, it was purposeful and I wanted to make two little half moons. It's not the case. <laughs> But you're kind of waiting just until you start seeing some steam come up and that's when you know you've got that other side kind of sealed. And then you want to start your timer, 45 seconds aside. Flip, flip. But very simple. Oh, see, those are doing it. So these two are moving a little bit more and, you, and like you can see that it's making like a little, uh, little pocket bubble on there. I think that's exciting because it gives you that little bit of the texture on the shells. I, yeah. just, I don't know why, it's just really good. I've always found it like really interesting too, how it's just make you're making it with the, just that cornmeal and that water, but yet somehow they're really sturdy. Um, and that always blows my mind that it's just a, you know, those two things in combination and, and you, you can make these big tacos that like hold together really, really well. Yeah. I like it too, because it's also gluten-free, which is a nice little, a nice little benefit. So flipping them again, and those are doing it. Those are doing the little dance. I mean, that's, yep. See, you can't tell, can, but they're happy. I'll show you this one. I'll yeah, try yeah, to pick yeah, it up yeah. real quick. It's flipping. Oh, you can no, see no. they got that. Yeah. Nah, I tried, but yeah, you'll see they kind of pop up and then they'll deflate again. It's, it's neat, it's fun. It's fun cooking. It is. And someone told us about that. Um, and that's how, that's how we learned that it was a good thing and not a bad thing. Um, and now we're passing that on to you. So you want to try to make that little bubble because it's fun. So I think once you've put those on the plate, you can finish doing the other two. Do you mind if I make some guac? Yeah, we'll start, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get after it. Awesome. Okay, so guacamole, the, the thing that everyone either loves or does not love. Um, in this household, um, we are such huge fans of avocados that it, it just can't even be understated. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I learned how to make uh, my own guac from a very near and dear girlfriend so long ago. Um, and she showed me just the way that I'm going to show you. And, and I don't think I've tweaked it since, um, but I've gone on to share it with a lot of people. And we've had some good reviews, so I'm hoping that you'll enjoy this as well. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm using for tools. This is going to sound insane, but this is a potato masher. And this is what I use to do the heavy lifting and the heavy smashing. Mostly because unlike this guy, I don't have the smash ability uh, to just do this with a fork. And I, why, yeah, why work so hard when we could just be smarter? So pro tip, potato smasher. Um, if you have a potato ricer, use that that's also um that's also a, i'm a big fan of putting it through a potato riser too um my lemon press um love this guy because it always gives me exactly what i need i'm going to use about one and a half cloves of garlic um i already put it through the garlic crusher you could chop it if you wanted to but again let your tools do some work for you um my knife to slice open my avocado, my beautiful avocado, and this fantastic mint bowl because everything in this house is mint. All right. So, even the, yeah, the, the everything. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and I just realized I need a spoon. Would you help me grab a spoon? Yeah. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into my avocado. And so I'm literally popping it in until I feel the pit, and I'm turning this avocado around on my knife and it makes exactly a half cut, simple, very simple. Um, I now have my two little halves, my two delicious halves. They look really good. Um, some things that I would look for to see if it's not a good avocado is if it has like a lot of dark browns or dark grays, like, or things that look stringy in it. But this guy looks really good. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. To take out the pit, we all know that there's a million um, YouTube fails on people talking about avocado hand, is it? Avocado hand. Avocado hand. And that's essentially people who are trying to go at, at pitting an avocado this way. That's crazy, people. Do not do it. Do not do it. All you need to do is let the knife do the work for you. So we're going to hold the avocado like this down. We're going to pop our knife in there, and we're going to twist. And the pit is stuck to the knife. See? That's it. Everyone's safe. No avocado hand here. <laughs> it's just fun to say. All right. Now I'm going to scoop some flesh, baby. And so I can tell that it's also a really good avocado because my spoon's going in there really nice and easy. And all I'm doing is just scooping out. Um, I guess the best way to describe it is like I'm taking little semicircle shaves off of it. So I'm just cleaning it out. There's some spots where I can see like it's a little bit brown. I'm actually just gonna scoop around it and leave it in the, in the shell um, and I won't add that into my guac. Normally I would be making this like several avocados at a time, right? Like yes. several. It's um, one of the best parts. It is one of the best parts and we are, it's always one of the fan favorites here when we're serving our friends. So um, again, scooping out, I'm looking for any brown spots or anything that looks stringy. Um, Really just any, anything that doesn't look delicious, um, you know, and pretty much avocados just look delicious. So, um, scooping him out, done. Shells, there you go. Awesome, yeah. thanks. All right, so I had, this guy was a pretty small-ish avocado. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this whole half into my um, lemon squeezer, but I'm only gonna give it a, a lighter, a lighter tension squeeze. In the end, I think it's going to end up being about a tablespoon and a half of lemon, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm also going to add, and add in my garlic. We love garlic in this household, and so you, you we've never had a um, we've never had an under garlic uh, problem. We are always we garlic. Garlic, it's spicy. Yeah, there's like no vampires in this house, like at all. <laughs> And so for the salt, I'm just gonna probably put about um, maybe like a teaspoon in and I'm just gonna squeeze it in there. I took a little bit too much, so I'm gonna pop that back in the top. I'd rather undersalt it now and taste it. And then literally, I'm just gonna mash this. Um, everyone does it all a little differently. Um, 
you know, I, I just, I find that this makes a good creamy way. Follow your heart on what consistency you want it. Sometimes, um, sometimes I mash it until it's so smooth that it's more like a, like a mayonnaise thickness. And I do that on purpose if um, I'm serving something a little more delicate or something where um, I want the avocado to be more of a, an accent to the meal. But for this, where it's gonna be for tacos, I'm probably gonna go for a consistency where it's a little bit chunky, but not big chunks, just finer chunks. We're not making a puree. Basically, if you, if you equate it, if we continue on with our mashed potatoes here, you wanna make it into a, a lumpy mashed potato and not the smooth mashed potatoes. Not to start a war, I know that um, potato consistency is it's a, a, hot button. It's a hot it's a button issue. Strong opinion. So this is going to be, um, you're going really for just, just a consistency of, you know, a lumpy mashed potatoes. That's kind of really beautiful too, isn't it? It's, very it's really tasty. All right, do you think I nailed it? I think you did. I mean, I nailed it. Sounds All good. right, so we don't have to modify it. And the good thing is, just like Kevin with his um, shells, we do this so often that you can pretty much just, um, you can start to feel it. When you're learning on your own, always under underdo your ingredients because it's so much easier to add a little more lemon and add a little more salt and add a little more garlic than it is to come up with another ripe avocado that'll probably only happen once in a lifetime. So, you know, as you're experimenting with your flavors, some people would also put cilantro and onion and other things. Uh, we play around with all of those things too, but for today, because we're using this for avocado, I mean, uh, for tacos, we want it to be the star because we have other ingredients we're gonna be putting into the taco. So there's no need to add the onion or some of those other flavors. This simple, beautiful mash is gonna absolutely be the right tone to set for the rest of the um, taco making. All right. so. I think now we are gonna we which we're gonna just go right into um, preparing the meats. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about what you have while I clear off the stage here? So flank steak is a I think it's a great steak for tacos. Um, very tender, very very soft and juicy. Um, we've already put taco seasoning on this. We've we've given it uh, kind of a dry rub with taco seasoning. Uh, we. You can use any a packet of it, buy it pre-mixed. We just use chili powder, cumin, some salt, a um, couple spices. Sometimes you put a little cayenne in there for feeling adventurous. Onion, garlic, jalapeno, you bet. Um, so it's just nice and slathered. Then I've already got my pans preheated. You always want to have a preheated pan when yeah. you're going to sear a steak. And we're just going to cook this three minutes aside on a, on a, on a high heat, medium high heat. So um, let and then me let that rest for about four minutes. Let me tell them about the um, tofu because I take about one minute more than you do. Mm -hmm. um, let me grab my little spatula gun. So we, in this house, we love those two flavors like I was telling you about in the beginning. We love the big, rich, delicious um, flank steak with the taco, bold taco seasoning um, flavors. And we purposely didn't put heat into this one because this tofu is um, marinated. Well, I shouldn't say marinated. It's been sitting in red chili oil and it's basically a red chili infused oil. Um, we get it in Mystic. We, we, um, you can see it, you find it almost anywhere. Um, so that adds a little bit of spice. And I took a extra firm tofu block. You see them in the grocery store in those little um, plastic containers with a um, light plastic lid. I do an extra firm tofu and I take it out of the container as a little block drained. I put it on a uh, towel, a kitchen towel, and I put a kitchen towel on top of that, and I put a cast iron pan on it to weigh it down and dry it out. Tofu is at its best when you take a lot of that moisture out of it. So you go from full block out of the fridge to onto a towel, another towel on top of it, and put a cast iron or something heavy. Sometimes I'll even use the um, tortilla press because it's cast iron. And it's heavy, Take the, and it drains that water out. And then I chop it up into the cubes that you see here. But because it can take a little bit of time to um, dry out your tofu and then get the oil in there, for this class, I went ahead and did it for you. I'm gonna pop it into my pan and it's gonna sizzle. And you're gonna hear it, I hope. <laughs> oh, I salted the oil as well. 
All right, watch out. You're going to get splattered, buddy. And so I know we're off the screen a little bit, so it's going to be harder to um, see, but um, the steak will have a lot of um, sizzling and smoke. And so we wanted to make sure that you could still see the cooking class. So we pushed it off to the side a little bit. Oh, actually, I'm going to keep this because when the tofu is done, I'm going to pop it in there. What I'm going for for the tofu is I'm just going for a nice little crisp um, uh, skin on it. And so when I was marinating um, my half of a block of the tofu, I had it marinating in probably, what would you say, like a quarter cup, maybe a little, a little bit more of oil, or maybe a little less. A little less than a quarter cup, yeah. So a little less than a quarter cup of oil. And I just had it sitting there. I put that whole thing into this pan um, so that it would kind of fry it up a little bit. Um, when you take it out, you can put a um, paper towel into the bottom to soak up some of that oil so that you don't have to eat all that oil. Um, but it makes for a nice crispy tofu. And that's really what you're going for with a taco, especially because we're using the soft shells. So you want a little bit of crunch. How's your journey? What do you got going on? It's going good. There's a metal tongs to flip it. I did test flip them. They're working. You have to. It's a, you can't, you, they don't work if you don't test flip them, right? No. Yeah, you have to test flip them. See, my tofu is getting nice and crispy, which is awesome. It's everything's doing exactly what it's supposed to. I kind of move it around a little bit too to, to try to make sure that every, every side gets um, crispy. Uh, the pan I'm using is just an absolutely giant pan, um, but we wanted to use our two heaviest pans so that we could make sure that we had good temperature transfer between the, um, for the steak and the tofu. So normally we would um, use a couple of different pans, but for this, this time frame, we thought, let's go big. <laughs> yeah, you want to use a heavier pan when you sear a steak. You want, yeah. to, you want to have a lot of heat and built up in that. I love tofu too. I, to me, tofu is just like, it's just got this wonderful flavor of, of whatever you put on it. So this is going to be a nice red chili, um, salt, awesome, spicy, you know, block of love. And I just like that I can change the flavor of it every time that I want to cook it, however I want to use it. So I love that. It's versatile. Yep. And again, seared steak, it's going to smoke, but don't be, uh, don't be afraid of it. Usually we'd have our hood bent on, but you wouldn't be able to use it. Yeah, which might be a blessing, you know, because really you're here for the tacos. But it's finally a summer day almost, <laughs> so it feels like it's 75, so all the windows are open. Yep. Awesome. We're just going, we're going for a good sear on each side. Yeah, and I'm doing really good on mine, so I'm actually going to turn my heat down a little bit because I don't need to, um, I don't need it to be too, too crispy. You you can you can make it too too crispy and by um, and what will happen is it'll just get really like hard to um, a harder crust on the outside of it. That's kind of it's okay, but I try to avoid that a little bit, especially in tacos, because you want to be able to get through everything in one really beautiful bite and not worry about something that's really really crunchy. Um, but experiment with your tofu cooking and you'll, you'll pretty much figure out how you and your household likes it. We eat it in every single way possible. We're just a pro tofu household, which sounds ironic when you're um, cooking your tofu next to a steak. They're both tasty. <laughs> Variety, baby. Who, who wants only one type, type of taco? You know, come on. And so from, from Kevin's, I can smell like this really great taco uh, seasoning right off of it. So it smells very um, earthy and wonderful. And I can smell the chili from mine and it's making me tickling my nose. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna sneeze because I can smell the pepper coming off. Mm. Perfect, awesome. I think it's going great. And believe it or not, we're like practically in, in the home stretch. Yeah, it's a very easy meal. <laughs> it's great for you know a nice day like this. You can still have plenty of time left in the day and hang out on the patio. And yeah, you have, you have no excuse to not have a Taco Tuesday or Taco Wednesdays as we're doing here. <laughs> I'm going to grab some of these paper towels to take out some of the oil. Yeah, 
it's just about done with this. And you can see we've got a, yeah, we're pretty, a pretty fair sear on, on that. So oh, we yeah. Like it, we like it a little, we like it well seared. Yeah, I was going to say, but what, what, com, what cook level are you going for? I'm going for uh, uh, pretty close to a, a, a rare, medium rare. So we yeah. like a good seared outside. And, um, no, we like our tofu crispy and our steaks rare. <laughs> Does that, anyone even said that sentence before? No. I don't even think so. All right, you heard it here first. All right, I'm going to take my tofu um, and put it into my container. Um, that you've been measuring time. So, I mean, that couldn't have been more than what, five minutes? You were at five minutes and 30 seconds. Five minutes and 30 seconds. So, we have 30 seconds left on the steak and then. As always with a steak, you want to let it rest for three or four minutes afterwards before you slice it. Um, or else when you cut it, all the juice is just going to come right out of it. You want it to kind of just mellow a little bit. Yeah, and, and it's actually especially good to keep in mind too, um, because we're going to be putting them into the corn um, tortilla shells. We don't, we don't want them to be, uh, we don't want so much liquid in that steak where, yeah. where it'll just make it sort of, I want to say soggy, but kind of. So timer to let this steak rest. It's all set now. And you have a cutting board over there. We always just kind of leave it on a cutting board. <clears throat> Look at that thing. Can you see that well enough? Look at that. It's a pretty, pretty good sear. I love it. And then we have our beautiful tofu, which we can just kind of pop right there. Awesome, no, look just, at that. So now we have to wait. So I wonder, um, what do we normally do when we're waiting? I think it's a good time to make a margarita. I think, I think it's time to make a margarita. What I'm gonna show you is actually not how to make a margarita, but how to make a, what I call an awesome tasty combination of my two favorite beverages, which is a mule and a margarita. So it's like a, a Mularita, um, Margul. Tijuana Mularita. Okay, you could get even fancier. Sure. I liked Margul, but you know, if that's not, if that's not, doesn't flow, then all right. Would you mind grabbing some ice for me? Sure. All right. So I'm not a mixologist, so don't ding me on my mixing skills. Um, you have to try this yourself because maybe you won't enjoy it as much as I do, but I really love this. So I'm going to grab all of the tools that I will need, which is my little shaker doodle thing. I'm sure there's a technical word, but like, does everybody just call it shaker thing? I think everyone just calls it a shaker thing. Shaker. So get, get a shaker thing. <laughs> because we're doing taco night, um, the, the vessels that I'm choosing to use are um, our mason jars, our pint-sized mason jars. I usually like to drink out of these guys anyway, because I think they're kind of cool. And I think they make a nice display. So I'm gonna pop some ice into that right out of the gate so that my glass doesn't warm up my beverage. I like a lot of ice because I like my beverages to be nice and cold. And especially when you're eating something like tacos with all those bold flavors, like I feel like it's really refreshing. I'm also gonna put in some ice into my shaker I'm gonna do this with my hands um, because this is insane trying to use that little scooper guy. I'm gonna fill this thing up just under halfway. Um, one more ice cube in there. Um, I'm gonna fill this thing up just under halfway. And the reason I'm doing that is so that my liquid that I use can, can be nice and cold. So <clears throat> would you mind grabbing uh, the ingredients I put over there? We are gonna to use tequila and we're gonna use triple sec. And for the triple sec, <clears throat> I'm gonna use the small side of this little shaker measurer guy, which I think is about one ounce. And I'm gonna put that in my shaker. Nope. <laughs> now I'm going to use the larger side and I'm going to put the two ounces in. I usually do just a little under. Put that into my shaker. Pop 
I'm going to put a half a cup of lime juice. I squeezed these before so you did not have to watch me agonize over squeezing a million limes. So I'm gonna pop my lime juice in there. I'm gonna kick these things over. I'm gonna pop this sucker on here and I'm just gonna- Not too tight though. Those things get stuck in there pretty well. Sometimes. I know, I think it's gonna do it. I just, I feel like, uh, it either explodes on me or I don't do it, or I do it too tight and then I get a problem. So I'm gonna shake this up. Let the shaking do the um, talking. The magic. All right, that feels good to me. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, see like cocktail making is a total workout. All right, this little weird snifter doodle guy, um, I put that on to keep my ice from coming out when I pour. So I'm gonna pour probably about halfway because I don't I, I don't know exactly where everything's gonna fall perfectly, but I'm hoping it will go about halfway and it looks like I'm I'm right on. And you've done this before. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite. And then the secret ingredient is I'm gonna use um, Gosling's ginger beer. Um, and it's just, you get them at, at any grocery store. Shout and, out to a sponsor opportunity. <laughs> and we like this guy because um, it makes a really nice smooth meal. So now I'm just gonna top off the mule with a little of that. And that's gonna add my sweetness. And I'm gonna use, you're asking why I'm using two. One is a diet one and one is not a diet one. And so- <laughs> So we have two beautiful little beverages there. And so normally you could put in a little bit of um, a lime wedge or um, any, any type of really fun garnish that you're using, like uh, some cilantro or something, you can pop it in there. But for now, um, we're gonna put these aside because we are now, let me put them over here actually. We're going to show you how we're going to assemble. Slice the steak. Oh, slice our steak, yeah. Our steak is now rested. Is that in the way? No, no you you should be okay. Making the cocktails in advance too makes it so that you can um, serve your uh, tacos like perfect yeah. temperature. And when you have a flank steak, you'll see there's a there's a grain to it. Um, you want to cut against the grain. Um, you know, maybe at a, at a forty five to it, kind of like slicing a corned beef, or else it's going to be um, a bit chewy and hard to bite through. Um, so we'll just start slicing down. And you're making them thin, right? Yep, and you just want to do thin slices, you know, about a, about a quarter inch. A quarter inch. We've got our nice, nice medium rare. Yeah. So we're just going to slice up about half of this for now uh, and just leave the other half, probably for steak and eggs maybe, because uh, we've got two kinds of tacos here. And then you have to test a piece. Yeah, is it good? Cheers. Yeah, okay. We didn't lead you astray. Just go. Here we go. Just go. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to assemble. Where's your beautiful shelf? All right. So I usually do a little flip. And I pick out my two favorite ones because I'm showing you how we do this. You'll see this nice little triangle thing here. This is like a neat little taco holder. After a while, we got serious about making our tacos and we also are really serious about our clothing, not getting demolished by tacos. So these little holders make it so that you can um, have a neat way to assemble your tacos, but also like it, it, it just like makes for a really nice presentation. So you can order your ingredients in any way you want to. We like to put our, our guac down onto one side, um, but whatever, we, but we like to put it in first because um, we feel like it doesn't fall out of the taco, you know? And so I'm just putting putting some guac right onto the inside of it. It's the glue that holds everything together. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. <clears throat> and so we've opted not to use cheese, which I know sounds absolutely insane, right? But when you have such a beautiful protein, 
like, uh, you know, the steak and the, the uh, tofu, the avocado adds this really nice oily, um, just really great texture. Cheese really just takes away from that, in my opinion. Um, let me grab the rest of these guys. All right, how do you want to build your steak? I usually go with a little bit of onion for a base layer, just to get the steak more towards the middle, so it's not always at the bottom. I mean, it's all, you're building a beautiful thing here. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually get just a good amount of raw onion down at the base, and then I'll maybe just put um, two slices two of steak slices. in there. I typically go for a little tomato, and we de-seeded this tomato. Um, just to take a little it, liquid out. Just to dry it out a little bit. Um, and then I like to just top it with a little bit of lettuce. We don't chop it super fine. We just think it presents a little better. We just kind of tear it a little bit. And it doesn't seem to change how you eat it. You and know? that's it. That's, that's how I like my toppings. So for me, I'm going to put in a couple of little tofu guys in there. And then I'm going to go with onion. And my onion's going to fall into the holes in my little taco space, my little tofu space. And I'm going to add my tomato. Catch what's falling on a table there. And I just chopped all of these things in advance. And if you're doing this for a party, just chop all of the stuff that you need in advance so you can focus on the, the things that have a lot more flavor. Um, and then I too am going to add a little bit of um, lettuce on the top there. But there you have two really beautiful tacos, two really beautiful beverages to go. And then you have like an unbelievable amount of delicious um, ingredients and you can just make a million more of these, which you absolutely will. Once you get your flavorings, and figure out all of the things that you love, you will be making tacos uh, from scratch like every single time. But it's why we limit ourselves to the six shells. If you make 10, you'll eat 10 tacos. Oh my God, if you so make 50, you'll eat them. It's awful. You start all right, what do you think? Out. Do you think it's good? One way to find Let's try out. it. Let's make sure we're not leading these people astray. Mm. Mm. It's wonderful. That's great. Flavorful. A lot of bite. Yep. Um, spice on my tofu, which is awesome. That's what I was going for. But cooled off by the guacamole. Good job. Cheers. Cheers.